everyone and welcome to this video on the semi-conservative model and how it can get really tricky on the MCAT. This is one of those topics that I'm sure you have heard before. You know the semi-conservative model, right? It's one of the foundations of genetics topics in all biology classes and it can still get confusing on the MCAT. Oftentimes the MCAT does do this, right? For these kind of foundational topics that we all have seen many, many times. They'll go ahead and throw a wrench in it, show it to you in a new, more challenging way. So today I'm gonna to teach you a very classic MCAT style problem that you may not have seen before about the semi-conservative model. So let's get started. So before we dive into that tough problem, I do wanna do a quick review of the semi-conservative model and the important points for testing on the MCAT. So I'm just gonna do a quick diagrammatic of what happens as a result of cell division in mitosis, right? So we have our cell here, it's gonna be our bacteria or eukaryote that go through the same process. And they have DNA and we'll make them green for our original. And the cell undergoes replication in S phase where we're still that original cell, but now we've doubled our DNA, and each DNA strand in this cell has replicated itself, cloned itself, with a new strand, right? So we have one of the old strand and one of the new strand, and then, of course, the cell undergoes mitosis and divides into two daughter cells, bringing along, right, the DNA that's one, half original and one half new. So our, our new daughter cells have one of the original strand, which is green, and one of the new strand, which we're writing in blue. All right, and that is the semi-conservative model, right? It's just the idea that we are bringing half of our DNA from our original cell into each of the new daughter cells and then making this new DNA right through the process of replication. So the reason why this is important on the MCAT and that they can test you on it is because this new strand, it's not coming from nowhere, right? It's coming from nucleotides that are either in the medium or in the cell, if we're thinking eukaryotic cells, but they often test this for prokaryotes. And the reason why is we can really easily observe different generations of prokaryotes such as E. coli on a medium and we can manipulate that medium to give them new building blocks for those new strands of DNA. So let me show you what I mean in the context of this hard question. You ready? Here we go. So here's the hard question. It's a hefty question stem, right? So go ahead and pause this video and read it to yourself and see if you can understand what's going on. If not, no worries, I'm gonna take you through the whole thing and we can do it together. A strain of E. coli was cultured in a medium containing isotopic 15N, right? So that is nitrogens. Now nitrogens, why do we care? Well, nitrogens are in DNA, right? Nitrogenous bases. So that means that anytime these cells divide, they're cultured, usually means dividing, they're picking up this isotopic 15N in their new DNA, right? So that's what this is saying is that these, this E. coli is gonna now have this 15N is as a part of its DNA. Okay, after several generations of this, of this 15N, the E. coli was transferred to a new medium, a new medium containing 14N, so different isotope, right? Isotopes have different masses, so we can use that. All right, so this new medium it allowed to complete three rounds of cell division. On test day, I would have highlighted three rounds, right? That's really important. So, okay, so we transferred the mediums. So that means that all of these subsequent rounds of division, these three subsequent rounds, are now gonna be picking up the 14 end to put into the new strands instead of the 15, right? So right away, we can kind of tell, like this is test day, oh, they're testing me on the semi-conservative model. What do I know about it, right? What we just talked about. And we'll use that knowledge to answer the question, which is a tough one. And they say, okay, the mass when grown in 15 N is 5.5. So 15 equals 5.5. I'm just gonna write those numbers together. Right, and then the 14N equals 
5.4. So not a big difference, which makes sense. These are just isotopes, right? But there is a difference between the DNA that has just 14 and the DNA that has just 15, right? Okay, which of the following genome masses could most likely be isolated from this culture? So honestly, you can make some guesses, but the safest way is to just draw out the semi-conservative model just like you were taught. So I'm gonna start with my 15N, right? Because that's our original, it's what it was originally grown in. So I'm gonna start with my blue. And so let's just say one E. coli cell, right? Double-stranded. And now this is the point at which we're putting it into the new medium. So if you kind of visualize, right? This is the plate, right? And this all has the 14N. So now the next time this guy goes through division, we're gonna split up the 15, one on each side, and now it's gonna use the 14N, this lighter nitrogen, to build its new strand, right? That's how it's gonna do it. So right now after this is generation one right after this first round of division we have a 50 50 split so that means the genome is entirely mixed between 5.5 and 5.4 so if we weighed it we wouldn't be able to weigh out a difference right so this would be 5.45 only right so now let's check out the answer choices right so we've got 5.4 only that would only be 14n 5.5 only that would only be 15n we have 15N and 14N, but they would have to be in separate cells, right? And then we have 5.4, which is 14N and 5.45. So now, if just doing that helped you out a little, good, right? Because we can see that this generation one would fall under the 5.45, right? That 50% either way. And the reason we know this guy's right is just because the average of the two weights would be 5.45. And again, within each cell, there's no way to separate out the separate strands, right? If we're just calculating overall genome weight. So it'd be a mix of both. It wouldn't be one or the other. This cell, right? This cell that's 100%, 15N, that would be 5.5. Okay, let's continue. So now we're gonna divide again, right? Same thing, we're splitting. And I just like to draw my original strands first we'll keep the same color. So my original strands are going to end up in the leftmost new guys, but again we're staying in the 14N medium. So now we've got a cell that's entirely 5.4, right? 14N. So now see how D is looking really good? Because as we know from the semi-conservative model, we're never going to lose this 15N, right? This 5.5 but it's going to stay a part of 50% of the new stuff, right? That's that semi-conservative. So it's always gonna be, we're gonna have two cells that always will have half 15N, half 14N, which is that 5.45, and we're gonna have our new cells, which are just the new medium 14N. So it doesn't matter how many rounds of cell division we do, right? We were supposed to do three, but we don't really need to because we know that three is gonna have that same situation, right? We're still gonna be bringing down our original strand. We're just gonna have more, right? More of those 5.4 only cells, but it doesn't mean that we won't have a 5.45 still in there because we're not asked about relative amounts. We're just asked about, is it possible to find this? Okay, so the answer here is D, right? It's 5.4 and 5.45. On test day, I probably would have very quickly eliminated A and B because we do know that there's going to be a mixture of both, right? So it's not gonna be only 14N and only 15N because we know that we conserve, semi-conservative, we conserve some of the original while bringing in the new, right? So I probably on test day would have been able to do that quickly but if this was a confusing concept with like the genome mass and the isotopes right just draw this out trust that your knowledge of the semi-conservative model will inform you about this new weird situation right there's no new content here there's just kind of a new setup okay so there's one more way that this can be tested which is percentage of the original genome compared to the new genome. So just to review that last question again. So just for the sake of doing some extra practice, let's ignore this whole mass concept, right? Let's just say 
this doesn't matter for right now. And let's say they asked you, what percentage of the genome after this third round would contain 15N? As a side note, this is a really great way to study. If it's a challenging practice problem and you figured out this exact setup and you understand where you went wrong, try to set it up in a slightly different way. That way on test day, when they show you something new, you'll already have anticipated the ways that they could change up a question on this topic and you'll be prepared to kind of have that flexibility to look at this concept in a new way. So for this way, right, we're ignoring the mass question and we're asking just what's the percentage of 15N found after the three rounds if we switched over to 14N at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my cells. You can go ahead and pause the video and try to work this out for yourself. Um, again, I'm not giving you multiple choice. So you'll have to do the math all the way out. Go for it. Okay, so I'm going to draw my two originals, right? These are my 15Ns. Right, it's 100% here, and then after one round of division, right, so this is round one, I, I like to write the one in the middle of the division part, right, we now have 50%, right, and I would probably just on test day to like keep track of your numbers, you could just write 50% on the side here, right, so after one round of replication, we're at 50%. And then after two rounds, right, this is round two, we're now at, we have one and two, and then we have all these new strands. So just a quick math review, right, how to do percentages. Count up your total amount, two, four, six, eight, and then count up the strands you're looking for. In our case, it's the original, so it's two, right? Two of eight is one fourth one-fourth in percentage, right, 0.25. You can turn that into a percentage by multiplying by 100, 25%. Now again, if you know that one-fourth is 25%, you don't have to do that all the way out. I'm just showing you the math for those of you who are rusty. Okay, so now we're down to 25%, and notice the trend, right? It goes from 100 to 50 to 25. This is just dividing by two, right? It's very similar to half-lives. So we'll do it all the way out, but I'm hoping you're going to anticipate what our answer is gonna be after the third round. So go ahead, kind of draw a small here. And again, I'm drawing this all the way out. I do not want you to do this all the way on test day, right? Once you can anticipate what's going to happen, you just stop there, right? There, you don't get points for showing your work on the MCAT, right? Okay. So I'm drawing all mine out. So just the same thing here, right? Like count them all up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, right? 16 strands, and of those 16, we only have two, right? So 2 of 16 is 1 eighth. For those of you who are comfortable with your percentages, you know that 1 eighth is 12.5%. You could also know that it's 0.125 multiplied by 10, right? Or you could have noticed this trend, knowing we're doing the same thing, and just divided 25% divided by 2, all of which will get us, and I'll write it big on this side here, 12.5%. So after three rounds of replication, we will now have 15N DNA in 12.5% of our overall genome. What if, one more question, what if they asked you how many cells would contain the 15N, right? Or what percentage of cells? Let's make it tougher. What percentage of cells? Well, now we have to count the cells and not the DNA strands. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight daughter cells, and two of those eight are the ones with the original. So that actually brings us back up to 25%, right? So 25% if they ask about how many daughter cells contain the 15N, and it's 12.5% if it's the overall genome percentage that contains the 15N. Okay, 
I know that was a lot. I just wanted a chance to show you all the different ways that they could challenge you mathematically on the biobiochem section on something even as simple and straightforward as the semi-conservative model. I hope this video helps you prepare for these types of challenging questions and gets you thinking about how you want to study topics that you know pretty well, but maybe aren't as adaptable as you need to be for TASTE. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.